welcome back to you roses i'm very excited to go back to making regular videos as i said in the comments below my last video i did have an issue publishing it because of copyright issues at the end of the day of course my video was legit because I do reviewing, reaction, and that's fair use. So the video is up there for everyone to see now. So if you had missed it, it's here. But anyway, as I also said in that comment, I was feeling a little bit disappointed and a little bit frustrated with the situation. So I wasn't filming anything, anything since then. And also I was quite busy. And yeah, and because it took so long, to start making more videos. That means we're gonna speed this up a little bit and we're going to do more songs. Uh, so we're going to do, I think, three episodes, no, so two episodes of seven songs and three episodes of six songs. I, I hope I did the math correctly. Today we're gonna be looking at songs from Poland, Norway, Australia, Malta, Israel, Croatia, and Spain. Can't wait. Okay, so first off, we have Poland. As you may or may not be aware, we've had a little bit of drama around our national selection this year. The audience voted for a different song, but the jury preferred a different one and that one came out victorious. So a lot of people were saying that the juries seemed to have rated the you know audience's favorite song particularly low because they wanted to make sure that even if it gets 12 points from the audiences, then it's still going to lose. You know, there were some accusations of, um, well, conflict of interest on the part of some of the juries. One of the juries is a choreographer that does choreography for... <laughs> everything in on Polish TV, Agustina Gurola, and he was also preparing the choreography for the dancers of Blanka, who won. There was an accusation also that Edyta Górniak, the legend, the absolute legend, Edyta Górniak, who came second in 1994, the year that Poland debuted at Eurovision. We're forever grateful to her. It was our best result ever, of course. So Edita Gunyak was also on the jury and her son apparently is friends with Blanca as well. Basically, the, the um, audience's favorite, Jan, uh, had the song Gladiator. I listened to that song before the selection and I loved it. I was actually, I thought it was so good that it was like a sure thing that he's going to win and he's going to represent us. And I was thinking, wow, that's great. Actually, I'm going to feel uh, quite proud if Poland presents this this year. And um, But alas, we didn't get that. We got, got Blanca. And I haven't heard her song yet because, of course, um, you know, uh, I'm a pro. So, you know, I'm, prepared, I'm taking these videos really seriously. I really do not listen to any of the songs before I react to them here. So this is going to be my genuine first reaction. But I do have to say I am sort of familiar with how the chorus goes. Because just being a Polish person consuming Polish media, it's just kind of impossible to it, it was impossible to avoid getting uh, to know at least some of it, you know, so bear that in mind. Um, However, I have not heard the rest of the song and, and most of the, uh, what I know about the chorus is mostly other people singing the chorus and, you know, not the original performance. So there's that. The title of the song is Solo and it's in English. So boo! And uh, yeah, but she was chosen in the national selection, which, uh, as you know, has been controversial, but I always give a yay for national selection. So yay! But for TVP, boo. <laughs> People also have been saying that, you know, the, um, that the TV station wasn't transparent with presenting the results of the voting. Anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> This reminds me a lot of Daria, who 
competed last year also to represent Poland and she lost, thank god. <laughs> but also she was favored by the jury, interestingly. I don't even know what to say about this. I... I hate it. <laughs> This also, I would say, her baby. I hate it. And the, the slight kind of like nasalness to her voice. Not a fan of that. Yeah. People were saying that she can't sing. And honestly, that's not my biggest problem. To me, the, my biggest problem is the song. I just don't, don't like it whatsoever. And, you know, like to think that this one, instead of Gladiator... Ah, uh, this makes me so mad. This, I'll be shocked. I'll be shocked if this makes it to the final. Yeah, it totally sounds like Eurovision in the early 2000s. This just reminds me of like the worst of the worst, like Kalomira, My Secret Combination, or that sort of thing. I'm pretty sure there there's people among you that love that song. God bless you, you know? I, I hate it though. So this is kind of, yeah, taking me back to that era, but not the parts that I enjoyed, so... Yeah, so now we're going to get to Norway. So Norway, I also heard something about. There was a little bit of buzz around this uh, entry. Let's see what I can find out about Alessandra. So the song she's going to be singing is Queen of Kings, which of course is in English. Boo! But she was chosen in the national selection, so yay! So, already, I know that she's a Norwegian-Italian uh, singer and songwriter, so that does, does that mean she wrote her song as well? Let me see. She is one of the songwriters on that song, so, okay. She's from The Voice of Norway, and she didn't get far, though. She just reached the live shows, and then she got eliminated. And that was in 2022, so... Yeah, so she's she's a very kind of fresh, um, young artist. Let's listen. So it says on Wikipedia that her genres are EDM and pop. So I hope it's gonna have some of that EDM in it. The opening sounds really interesting. Interesting. That's not what I expected. Okay, wow. This chorus slaps. <laughs> it's pretty cool, but you know what? I think this song would sound better if it was sung by someone who has training and experience in classical singing. Not to say that she sounds See, this is the thing. <laughs> I kind of like how opera single singers tackle those high notes a bit more than what pop singers usually do. She sounded there a little bit like last year's Israeli contested Eden Alene, right? Overall, great song, very catchy, super energetic, love that. Um, very nice performance too. I thought she has quite a lot of charisma uh, and energy on the stage. And I think that all of it was staged pretty well. Yeah, in general, like a very, very good entry. So good job, Norway. Uh, congratulations on that one. So next up on our list is Australia, represented by Voyager. And I couldn't be more excited about this because Voyager actually came second last year in the national uh, selection. And I really loved their song. Uh, I'm very glad to hear that they're going to be representing Australia this year. But I have to say, they were internally selected. So boo! Even if a dictator does something good, it's still bad, like, on principle. And their song obviously is in English, so boo! Of course it's Australia, but you know what, you know, they can also 
make a song in someone else's language. Nobody tells them like, oh, it has to be English. Voyager has released seven albums and they were, uh, they, the band was started in 1999. So they've been around for a long time. I'm expecting a lot. I hope that I will love this one as well. It's synth metal, which is kind of like, the best thing. The title is Promise. If you've never done anything like this before, then you haven't been alive. Have you ever shut off the open doors? That was actually a nice example of uh, first of uh, zero conditional with uh, present perfect. <laughs> I'll be showing this to my uh, students, you know. <laughs> oh, 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 I already learned the lyrics. Oh, they do it up there. Solo, a guitar solo. Yeah, I want guitar solos back. <laughs> ah, <laughs> in the same solo as well. Ah, <laughs> oh, it was good. It was good. At first, like, you know, after the first um, verse and chorus. I was thinking, oh, I don't like it as much as I liked their previous song. But you know what? Like, the way that this song just grows and there's, like, extra elements added to it, enriching it, and, you know, it ends in this big finish. <sighs> Remember I said about Albania that I feel like the song is a little bit chaotic? This one has so many elements to it. Like, they, they threw everything but the kitchen sink at it, honestly. But it does not feel chaotic because it builds up kind of slowly. And I feel like kind of all the transitions sort of make sense, don't sound awkward. I mean, the pause before the growl. It's just, it's everything. It's everything. And mm, love that. <laughs> So it's definitely going to be my favorite for this episode. I can't imagine. I can't imagine anything beating this. But we never know. We'll see. Okay, so next up on our list is Malta, represented by the Busker, who are, one, uh, who are chosen in the national selection. So yay! But their song, Dance Our Own Party, is in English. So boo! So The Busker is, according to Wikipedia, an indie pop band started in 2012. Again, Wikipedia says that they draw inspiration from 1960s pop bands such as The Beatles and The Beach Boys. Without much further ado, let's dive into it. Ah, the saxophone, my favorite instrument. Well, no, sorry, my favorite instrument is the cello. Saxophone is close second. Just for that saxophone hook. I love them. That, you know, like really low, kind of dirty saxophone also sounds super cool. You don't hear it that often. Nice bridge, nice bridge. Yeah, I don't understand the lyrics at all. What's happening in the lyrics? <laughs> I have no idea. It's, it's a vibe. This song is a vibe. Yeah, that, that sounded really, really cool, I have to say. It's, uh, yeah, it's funky, 
yeah, and uh, as I said, great, great energy. Yeah, it sounds really, really, really nice. Really, really cool. One of the German entries uh, last year or two years ago used ukulele, and I fucking hate ukulele. <laughs> so, you know, but here they used uh, an instrument that I love. Okay. So, next up on our list is Israel, represented by Noah Kirel. And what's interesting is that actually she was announced as the participant in July last year. So, yeah, and so she's been known for a very, very long time, but she has only released her song, like, yesterday. The title is Unicorn, so it's in English. Boo! And she was internally selected, so also, boo! So I read about her on Wikipedia and pff, she's a big deal in, in Israel. She starred in TV series and movies. I think from what I understand here is that she started her career on YouTube much like Justin Bieber or something like that. Anyway, let's see. That's a very dramatic beginning. I'm gonna stand in like a unicorn Out here on my own I'm She reminds me of last year's Monty's contested Because I don't like her <laughs> the power of a I kind of don't like her style of singing So Also, I was really hoping for more violence It starts with violence And I was expecting that that's gonna be a big part of the song But it isn't now it's a little bit better, a little bit better with that beat. You wanna tell me that there's strings all the time in this song and I can't hear them? Okay, I mean, when I put two earphones in, then I kinda hear it. I like this part. Okay, there's a little bit in Hebrew as well. No, I don't. <laughs> She's a centaur! Yeah, I don't necessarily actually like the, the dancing that consists mostly of fucking the floor. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, nowadays everybody, everybody's doing it and I, I'm kind of over it. Wow, that was a very abrupt end. <laughs> it kind of sounded like it has an extended version, you know, and they just had to cut it <laughs> to three minutes for Eurovision. <sighs> I don't know. Just the, the intro itself, like the literally the first five seconds sounds so cool. And I was expecting something totally different than what we actually get. Like I said, um, if you were going to have strings in your song, make them more prominent because... It's just a waste, you know? I don't know, it has, it, ha it has good moments, it has good moments, but that, you know, like that first part, the first verse and the pre-chorus, uh, I don't care for them. I don't know, later on it, it gets a little bit, uh, a little bit better, I guess. So next up on our list is Croatia, and I gotta say, I'm kind of excited for this one. Croatia is going to be represented by the band Let Tri from Rijeka, which was started in 1987 so they're like the dinosaurs <laughs> in this contest i gotta say reading about this band i'm like how did i not know about them before it sounds amazing and it's, seriously i feel like i have to read to you the entire history of the band on wikipedia because sure you could just google it but like <laughs> I, I gotta make sure you hear about this because it's amazing. In 1997, the band released their fifth album titled Nechu Veno, which could be translated as Outrageous or Unheard Of. And it was distributed as a CD and it had nothing recorded on it. So yeah, it was unheard of, literally, because you couldn't hear it. <laughs> Genius. And then their follow-up was the album Jedina, which means the only one. And it had just one copy. The record company eventually released the album 
in slightly different versions, and as a protest, the band staged a fake suicide by firing squad on Ban Yelachi Square in Zagreb. <laughs> in December 2006, the band was sanctioned by police after performing naked at an open-air concert in Varazdin. The band's defense was that they had not been naked because they had corks in their anuses. <laughs> they won this national selection with the song Mama Shti. <laughs> For their performance, they are joined by the artist Janu Tatai Jacques as the character Ninle. So thanks to this, I found out that there's a, this artificial language, this, this Argo created a, in former Yugoslavia called Shatrovacki, and it's mainly based on um, changing the order of the um, syllables in a word. So Ninle actually means Lenin. Okay, I'm uh, curious, I'm very curious. Mama kupila traktora. Mama kupila traktora. Mama kupila traktora. Traina nina, arma ghetonona. This is weird, which is what I expected. Mali pod But listen, their lead singer actually has quite of a quite good pipes you know like wow that was a journey i feel like definitely this is more of a um performance focused it's more of a avant-garde provocative uh, art project rather than strictly a music band and i really appreciate that honestly i i like it when people sort of you know, shake things up a little bit. I didn't get into the lyrics, I didn't read the, the lyrics or the translation of them, but uh, some of the things I think are pretty self-explanatory. So I'm guessing that probably there's some pacifist message in this, uh, in this song, anti-imperialist, probably, right? <laughs> Stuff like this. The, the whole like staging of this is also pretty interesting, really exciting. I love that we have the, uh, a, an act like this at the Eurovision Song Contest, because, you know, otherwise it would have been pretty boring if everyone just sent Blanca, <laughs> you know? Okay, so now we're officially on our last contestant for today, which is Spain. I mean, Blanca Paloma representing Spain. She was chosen in the national selection, so yay! And her song is in Spanish, so yay, finally. <laughs> She's uh, actually been working as a set designer and costume designer for many years. She's my age, actually. She was born in 1989. Uh, she's only just started her singing career last year, actually. Last year? No, sorry. For, uh, 2021, so uh, two years ago. Which means that there's still hope for people in their 30s. You can change careers. <laughs> anyway, let, without much further ado, let's listen to the song, which is... Ea Okay. Oh my god! My god how is this episode so good like literally all the songs wow 
Except Poland, of course. Jesus Christ. This year is going to be amazing if this continues like this. This in particular is just has a lot of the elements that I love so much. I don't know. I was just mesmerized the whole time. I mean, right now in my head, uh, that melody is kind of stuck. Ah, yeah, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Like I loved so many of the entries today. You know, and I was saying like, oh, no one's gonna come even close to Australia. And now I'm going like, I don't know. Cause this was amazing. Uh, but in a completely different way. And then Croatia was pff, uh, mind blowing in its own way. Then uh, Malta was nice as well. A really enjoyable song. And Norway, obviously. Norway was a banger. Israel, oh yeah, Israel I was kind of lukewarm about. And Poland, hated just, I mean like, I wouldn't have like, no, I would still have hated it if it was a different country. I, th I was thinking like, you know, I hate it because it's Poland and, you know, because I'm a little bit more ambitious. But, like, I would want my country to, like, pick a more ambitious and more interesting song. But you know what? No, even if it was like a different country and I didn't care, I would still hate that song. <laughs> it's just... But to be honest, I think even if we had gone with the Gladiator, I what I can tell from this episode is that competition is fierce this year. So... We still, we still not necessarily would have been all that successful. You know, I think that uh, Gladiator by Jan sounded a lot like, you know, like a lot of the stuff that we've been getting. Uh, we've been getting at Eurovision for for the last couple of years. So in, in a way, it doesn't sound that unique. It's like, I hope that it wasn't that we had all the interesting songs in this episode. And then later we'll have nothing interesting to listen to. <laughs> I hope that the, the other episodes are going to slap just as hard as this one. Um, fingers crossed. So anyway, thanks again for tuning in. Please like, comment and subscribe, all that stuff, you know, and I'll see you on another episode of Eurosis. So bye.